Warning, the language in this podcast is so filthy, your headphones probably have a little dust cloud around them like pig pen. This week's episode of The Scathing Atheist is brought to you by Honey, Hymns, Stamps.com, and by the Iowa Caucus. The Iowa Caucus, because none of us could agree on how to spell snafu. And now, The Scathing Atheist. Hi, this is Marie Delafont from the Everyone's Autonomous Podcast. When I think back to when I was a fundamentalist Christian, I can't help but think, what an idiot I was. And by I, I mean you. It's February 6th. And it's Ronald Reagan Day. <laughs> so, I guess everybody sell some weapons to the Taliban. What could possibly right, go wrong? Right, right. Way ahead of you. I'm No Illusions. I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Heath Enright. And from Kevin Spacey's New Jersey. Great actor. Cincinnati Swing State. And good husband Georgia. This is The Scathing Atheist. On this week's episode, one million moms will pour out the first bowl of the Super Christ... We learn how Hillary Clinton murdered Kobe Bryant with math. And Don Ford will get adventurously fantastic up in this motherfucker. But first, the diatribe. Imagine how few knobs you'd have to tweak and how little you'd have to tweak them for us to be living in a universe where we just made it through yet another divisive Groundhog Day. Honestly, you complaining about taking the Christ out of Christmas isn't inherently weirder than bitching about taking the God out of Groundhog Day, right? You can even see the signs. They would just like bold the G, the O, and the D in ground. Or they put like each word on top of each other and then they like, just bold the O in hog and act like they just made an acronym. And then then they point to a lack of a dedicated Google doodle and call it discrimination against Jesus. I mean, look, the the two holidays are actually pretty similar. Groundhog Day happens on Candlemas, which is officially the commemoration of the presentation of Jesus at the Holy Temple in Jerusalem. The the whole groundhog scene at Shadow thing, it comes from the correct observation that sunny days in winter tend to be colder and the Incorrect extrapolation that if it was sunny on Candlemas, it would probably be a longer winter. And at some point, animal sees its shadow becomes the measure of sunny day. And there you have it. There's the whole fucking holiday. But every step along the way was coming out of a Christian tradition, which was a bastardization of an old pagan holiday that was way better than its Christian variation. Hell, it's so similar to Christmas that it's actually kind of hypocritical for those Jesus is the reason for the season folks not to bitch about the secularization of Groundhog Day. So, yeah, you turn one or two knobs, one or two clicks, and all of a sudden Christians have found a way to make a holiday that's normally celebrated by saying, oh, was that last Sunday? And make it less fun because nothing sucks the fun out of things like taking them seriously, which is, after all, the whole reason we're here, isn't it? I mean, look, while we're twiddling the knobs of seriousness on Groundhog Day, let's be careful not to slip a little bit, right? Because if you think about it, the whole celebration kind of feels like a religion that didn't quite take. Think about this. There's an exclusive group of dignitaries that call themselves the inner circle. They have access to a groundhog that legend holds is 125 years old. Thanks to the immortality punch that he imbibes each summer. He offers up his proclamations in a language that only they can understand. And most importantly, in terms of its similarity to a religion, those proclamations are wrong more often than they're right. So again, twiddle those same knobs a couple more clicks further, and we've gone beyond bitching about the woodchuckless Starbucks cups on the 2nd of February, all the way to a world where people kill each other over whether or not he saw his shadow. Generational rivalries between the Puxatawney Philistines and the Staten Island Chuckites reach a temporary armistice while they join in arms against the Beauregardists of Georgia. And as much as I'd love to cop the hyperbole here, to get there, we'd have to accept that which of us has the better weather predicting marmot is somehow stupider or less consequential than does this bread actually change into a dead guy when I say the magic words? 
you know, and I think it's instructive to play out this little mental exercise because, look, all we did was take something that's patently false and imagine what it would be like if people took it really seriously. And since saying somebody is religious about something, as Dan near synonymous was saying that they're serious about it, there might be a lesson in all this hypothetical knob turning. Look, for a lot of people, religion isn't much more than Groundhog Day. Right. These people go to the church and they nod along and they tell their kids the PG version of the Bible stories as though they were Aesop's fables. If they were in a pinch, they'd probably say, yeah, I actually believe in this thing, but they sure as hell wouldn't act like it or behave like it. And those people tend to lull atheists into this false sense of hope that, you know, maybe we're on our way to a world where those knobs get twiddled back a bit. But to be religious about something is to take it seriously. And the people who sit in the pews and teach it to their children, even when they don't actually believe it themselves, are hardly an indication of nonchalance. Instead, they're evidence that the people who do believe it take it so goddamn seriously that rational people have found it easier to play along than admit that reality is real. OK, it's a smokescreen to fool atheists and secularists into thinking that there's a path to appeasement. It's just another sign that the problem with religion isn't in the interpretation or the commitment or the form. The problem with religion is that it's religious. They're talking about your Jesus. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you a special news bulletin. Joining me for headlines tonight are the other two kittens that lost their mittens, Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick. Fellas. Are you ready to forego some pie? Absolutely not. I keep a spare set of pie mittens just for situations <laughs> like this. And I'm a big enough man to admit that I was wrong for making fun of your four mitten pie setup, Heath. That Thank was on you. me. See? All right. This is why. Well, I feel like there's no way to steer this intro back onto the rails from here. So we're just going to pause for a quick word from our first sponsor this week. Honey. Pie mittens. Yeah. You wanted to see me, Mr. President? Oh, hey, Tyler. How's the weather up there? I, I'm still normal height. Sir, is everything okay? Yeah, I'm just a little blue is all. You know, from the State of the Union. Nancy, I don't know, nobody noticed, but Nancy tore up my speech and none of the pretty girls in Congress came, so. Yeah, no, that's rough, Mr. President. And, you know, now I'm trying to buy myself a cheer-up gift, but everything's so expensive. Well, why don't you try honey? I am trying, darling. No, Mr. President, Honey is the free online shopping tool that automatically finds the best promo codes and applies them to your cart. It does? For which website? A ton of them. Honey supports over 30,000 stores online, including Macy's, Target, Sephora, Best Buy, and more. And they're adding more every day. Honey helped me save almost 50 bucks on my Valentine's Day gift this year. For, for me? Um, yeah. Oh, Tyler, you are a federal judge. Nope. Nope. Don't make me a federal judge, please. Sure? Anyway, using Honey feels pretty great. Think of it as a little daily victory. Plus, it's free to use and installs in just seconds. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash scathing. That's joinhoney.com slash scathing. You know what, big guy? I will. Thanks. Or should I say thanks, your honor? Sir, please don't make me a federal judge. Too late. You're a federal judge. And now, back to the headlines. In our lead story tonight, adding to the laundry list of terrible consequences of Christianity, I had to watch the goddamn Super Bowl halftime show because of those motherfuckers now. <laughs> right? Because, like, in real time, the fucking halftime it consisted of me going upstairs to play Robo Recall until Lucinda texted and said, hey, the game's back on. But then the Christians described it as borderline pornographic to the point where I was like, well, fuck, I should have watched that shit. So I did. <laughs> and it was just a goddamn Super Bowl halftime show. And yes, J-Lo and Shakira are very talented. And the people on the stage with them could move their butts in a vast number of directions. But I was promised animalistic bacchanalia. And I got, you know, a musical performance with dancing in it. OK, well, I mean, it's <laughs> it's BYOB. Bring your own bacchanalia. You got to set that up yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I was doing. But come on, they crushed it. Shakira, J-Lo, like... The pole dancing? That was pretty great, too. I uh, I very much want to learn how to pole dance now. I was excited <laughs> by that. I could teach you. Um, Can you? I mean, I can. It's not legally protected, like being a doctor. <laughs> okay, well, there you go. Yeah. yeah. I feel like that's in my wheelhouse for dancing. <laughs> like, if there's a wheelhouse of dancing for me that exists, probably doesn't. But this might be it if it does exist. Yeah, I, I, can see I will say this. I can see there that. is no amount of money I won't pay to watch you try. Patreon goal. <laughs> Patreon. 
No, oh, okay. But just because entirely non-pornographic musical performances, what was there, doesn't mean that that's what Christian saw. So the headlines on Monday were filled with fainting couch dictations from the usual suspects. For example, one million moms, the group, not the number of mothers, described one of Jennifer Lopez's outfits as a, quote, glitter maxi pad, which is honestly funnier than I'm used to out of them. I'm going to give them a point. I'm just going to I'm not even going to fuck with them. Give them <laughs> it a point it is a one. step up for them in humor, for sure. <laughs> Oh. But I mean, I guess I'm assuming they're talking about her like motorcycle pirate from the future thing. Uh -huh. And if that's what they're talking about, they need to check themselves. That was delightful. And I have always wanted to see a Ron Rod dance. And this was even better because it was like <laughs> talented. Yeah. Pretty sure he's who J-Lo defeats at the end of the movie. But I get yeah, it. Yeah, right. Get it. Right. Yeah. No, exactly. <laughs> Oh, evangelical spokesman and professional son of his father, Franklin Graham, also made the news over a tweet vaguely condemning the performance and bemoaning the nation's lack of moral decency. He tweeted in part, quote, this exhibition, that's the halftime show, was Pepsi showing young girls that sexual exploitation of women is OK, end quote. Yep. Nothing more exploitive than multimillionaires performing songs that made them famous in their native languages. Yeah, Real. right, right. <laughs> No well, victims, and, and he then goes on to imply that from now on, when women get sexually trafficked, it's at least a little bit Shakira's fault for how sexy that rope thing that she did was. <laughs> she, she kept pulling out new items like she was Link. It was amazing. <laughs> Maybe so happy. She had a guitar out of nowhere. All of a sudden she's playing it's a nice guitar the rope yeah, thing. Yeah. yeah. But of course, the most epic meltdown and coming in just under the wire like you knew when we recorded came from friend of the show and secret real life Heath side character, Dave Dobenmeyer, who was so pissed. He just might have to start projecting a baseball diamond onto the green screen behind him. <laughs> and Dobby's proposed solution. He wants to sue the NFL for making 12 year old boys squirt. Oh my Whoa. God, please sue the <laughs> NFL. Please, <laughs> yes. please do that. Yes. Please. We will give you our lawyer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Quote, I think we ought to sue. Would that halftime show have been rated PG? Were there any yes. warnings that your 12-year-old son, whose hormones are just starting to operate, was there any warning that what he was going to see might cause him to get sexually excited? End quotes. <laughs> Which 100% means that Coach Dave turned to his son and was like, all right, boner check. I fucking knew it. I knew it. <laughs> Call Andrew Torres. <laughs> Yeah, also, I was a 12-year-old boy. Dave, if you're going to sue everything that sexually excites your 12-year-old yeah, boy... Yeah, no shit! <laughs> you're going to need to sue a lot of people. I need to sue school bus. I need to sue <laughs> not Gym school class. bus. Waking up, I need yeah, to sue exactly. sleep and awake. <laughs> Pillsbury oh, Doughboy. <laughs> I'm glad to know it wasn't just me. Pile right, so of flour. I need to see the couch cushions that I have. Warm <laughs> apple pie. Yeah, right. All right. So, look, it's hard to take people seriously when their job is pretending an immortal wizard made the universe. But it's all that much harder when they get significantly more pissed about Jennifer Lopez grabbing her crotch than they would if the president had grabbed it. And as the scantily clad chicks with the pom-poms next to the field will tell you, this isn't a new thing on a football field, the scantily clad shit. Right. It's almost like these Christians are suddenly way more bothered by a woman's sexuality as soon as it seems like she might be empowered by it. Isn't white. Mm. Sorry. What? What did you say? <laughs> both. It can be both. <laughs> also that. Yes. And in in embezzle deo news tonight. Every so often here at the Scathing Atheist, due to our position on the iTunes charts, we receive an email from a well-meaning Christian. Nope. Who listened to our show definitely not and was moved by the holy spirit <laughs> also no absolutely not <laughs> to write us an email and these emails pretty much always have a few things in common uh yeah mostly just so much sexual tension yeah, <laughs> well, well that and, and the belief that capitalization is determined by the relative importance of that word to the sentence yeah. <laughs> well yeah that too those end that at some point in the email, when said well-meaning Christian stops 
buying even their own bullshit about religion being true, they include a paragraph or two about religion being useful. They tell us about their grandma's church that has a soup kitchen or how their church did a coat drive. And this week we got yet another piece of evidence against their argument. Yeah. You guys are being kind of mean. Churches don't just rape kids. That's the argument, just to be clear. <laughs> right. And, and and we got evidence against that argument this week. <laughs> we yes, did. we did. Yeah. So here's a story. David O'Connell, a Rhode Island native, is suing the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops in light of a recent Washington Post expose about their charity, Peter's Pence, which revealed that less than... 10% of the funds donated to Peter's Pence since 2013 were going to poor people. Great. So, Jesus. Yeah, Peter's Pence collects about $55 million a year, but wow. most of that money goes towards plugging the holes in the Vatican's own administrative budget. Holes, which we should point out, are created by all the kid raping. That is where those holes come from. <laughs> and by the way, this is when those emails might say, okay, but, you know, if we're being fair, that 10% to the poor number, it's a bit higher when you count rape victims who are poor. Okay, I heard it. I heard what <laughs> well, I was saying. Well, right up until the I heard it, but they never hear it. They don't hear it. So, right? No, like, I, even I, when you isolate credit. it and play it back for them, they still don't hear Noah it. Noah sends back no, MP3s not. of what they would sound like reading their own email to themselves. And no, they never <laughs> hear it. Still doesn't work. Still does not work. However, we should point out in defense of our emailer here, not all the money went to kid raping. According to an Italian newspaper cited in the lawsuit, more than a million dollars donated to Peter Spence was invested in the Elton John biopic Rocket Man. What? It's a weird one. Yeah. Another three point six million was invested in Men in Black International and two hundred million was invested in luxury apartments in London. Lovely. OK. OK. But like based on Men in Black International's box office, I'm pretty sure that does still count as a charitable donation. So. Oh, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> that's that. fair. So, uh, yeah, quick reminder to the Christians totally not listening to this podcast. This headline is the long answer to your question. So you're kind of lucky Noah just tells you to fuck yourself, right? <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you glad? And in putting the art in heartless news tonight, as loath as I am to deploy the they're coming for our gerbs defense, that's actually what's happening. And that's what my next story is about. <laughs> so bear with me. This is the story out of Watkins College of Art, a secular college in Nashville, Tennessee, being bought out by the larger and way less secular Belmont University. So now all of a sudden, this secular college has to become Christian. And the consequences of that range from frustrating filmmaking students are only allowed to make PG movies now to laughable. Artists won't be drawing nude figures anymore. Seriously? It's a downright fucking demonic. They're going to fire all the non-Christians that work there. <laughs> I love I love the nude figure drawing thing. Just like a nude model at the front of the room posing behind a weird Swiss cheese bubble screen out of cardboard. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I don't know. What this is uh, this is new to me. Is this like a glory hole situation? Do I put the dick through? What do you want me to do? <laughs> well, wait a second, Noah. I've been assured by... Many non-atheists who still want to be on TV that Christians make the best art. Surely there's been yeah. some mistake. Oh, no, it must have been. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we'll do an investigation. I'm sure it'll come out your way eventually. So, yeah, um, this announcement came out during a Q&A thing you, with students after the merger was announced. And it's not even clear that the professor and faculty whose jobs were at stake heard about this before the Q&A. But during their little town hall thing, the provost was asked about the school's hiring practices going forward, to which he said, quote, we do not hire people who are not Christian. So the ones who are not Christian will not be eligible to work at Belmont. That's just part of who we are, end quote. Well, here's the crazy part. A room full of adults heard that sentence, and the next question was like, so does the fall semester start on the 22nd? Yeah, right, right. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, let's be clear. This is all perfectly fucking legal. Right. In the same way that Ken Ham can force his employees to sign a statement of faith to work at his amusementless amusement park. These guys can come in, buy this school and fire all the non-Christians. And if their past performance is any indicator, they're also going to fire any gay people that they Obviously. find. 
Gross. at the art college. And by the way, if there's anything less valuable than an art degree, it's an art degree from a homophobic Christian college. And something tells me they're not offering <laughs> refunds to the atheist students that don't want their tuition going to bigots. <laughs> right. Which means if there are any Belmont U atheist students listening, hear me out. Call me Comedy Heist. Come on, people. That writes itself. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. While the three of us kick up a quick screen treatment, we'll take a break for our second sponsor this week, Hymns. Lulu Lou, doing Heath stuff. Heath stuff is my favorite stuff. Lulu Lou. Hey, Heath, what you doing? Whoa. Ah, uh, Eli. Well, what happened to your hair? What do you got going there? You like it? I waited till Noah was asleep. I shaved him and I made a wig. Check it out. Uh, oh. Wow, that, that's pretty awesome. But um, why don't you just try 4 What's 4 It's a one-stop shop for hair loss, skin care, and sexual wellness for men. An online shop for hair loss, Heath? Pull the other one. No, seriously. Hims is helping guys be the best version of themselves with licensed physicians and FDA-approved products to help treat hair loss. So no monkey brain pills or wild horsetail root? Nope. Nothing but prescription solutions backed by science. But don't I need a doctor for a prescription? That's right, you do. And 4 Hims connects you to real doctors online, which could save you hours. Plus, it's completely confidential and discreet. That's pretty cool. You know what, Heath? I'm on board. How do I sign up? Here's how you can dive into 2020 hair first. Right now, our listeners can get started with their first month free. Just go to 4 slash scathing. That's 4 slash scathing. Prescription requires an online consultation with a physician who determines if a prescription is appropriate. Offer valid only if prescribed. Three-month minimum subscription. Additional restrictions apply. See website for full details and important safety information. Remember, that's 4 slash scathing. Eli, what did you do? Oh, I gotta go. Where is he? Uh, try Mexico, maybe? Nah, I'm gonna go somewhere cold. He likes warm weather. Smart. Yep. And we're back. And in EO Jackson news tonight, right-wing radio host, former candidate for lieutenant governor of Virginia, and Ray Comfort's second most offensive character, E.W. Jackson, <laughs> got in a big old fight with himself on the radio this week. Who's the uh, first most? <laughs> it's him. It's, it's yeah, Ray Comfort. This person. Yeah. This person. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And the result of that fight is that he is smarter than us. So... <laughs> Interesting. Here's the story. Yeah, here's the story. Earlier this week, Representative Jerry Nadler called Donald Trump a dictator in his closing remarks. And while educated adults can argue about whether or not Trump is a dictator or just wants to be. Well, oh, they already did argue, but they didn't they didn't call witnesses, but they argued about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Jackson wants Nadler <laughs> censured by the Senate because, quote, what message are you sending to the country when you stand up and tell people that we have a dictator in office? End quote. Um, it's a pretty straightforward message. You want me to read it back to you, E.W. Jackson? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so what happened was Hemant Mehta at the Friendly Atheist blog and others pointed out, Hey, E.W. Jackson, isn't this you in a video from 2013 calling Obama a dictator? <laughs> To which Jackson literally responded, I have a higher IQ than you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, tic-tac-toe right now. Let's do this. <laughs> Let's settle this I'm shit once smart. and for all. <laughs> yeah, one thing you can say for certain about anyone who has ever used I have a higher IQ than you as an argument is, no, the fuck you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. Nope. <laughs> Automatically. They take it away. Maybe check geocities.iqtest.com <laughs> and you'll fucking learn the right facts. <laughs> I have a 600 <laughs> IQ. <laughs> Not that I want to give it away, but there's only one banana in the third picture. That's where they get you. <laughs> so... Here is Jackson's full response. Please don't do the voice. Please don't do the voice. Please don't. Okay, He's granted, do I will not do the voice. Uh, this is the thing you have to understand about the left, folks. I think because of their godlessness, because of their spiritual defect, their intellect is very, very superficial. When I say that, I don't mean they're not bright, that they don't have a high IQ. I'm saying that there's an internal malfunction in their intellect 
that renders them stupid and renders them superficial. And this is an indication of that. End quote. Uh, stupid says what? Damn it. I said it. Uh, yeah. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I, I'm going to go ahead and admit that my feeble atheist intellect can't even begin to fathom his. It's okay for me to hold two mutually exclusive opinions because you're a stupid duty head argument. I don't even know what a <laughs> refutation would look like. So <laughs> guilty. And next up in headlines, South Dakota heard about West Virginia trying to woo a bunch of bigots into arguably the worst state in the country. And they decided to get into that argument. It's a, it's a weird competition. And it looks like South Dakota's new selling point is HB 1215, a new bill that would very literally dehumanize the entire LGBT community. Yeah. And they're also working on HB 1057, that would potentially jail doctors who provide medical care to kids who are trans. It's truly disgusting what's happening right now. Like, we've been doing a weekly show about pure evil for years, and this was jarring. Yeah. No, right? Like, imagine a fucking Ray Comfort documentary that wanted to be a law. Yeah, or like Schoolhouse Rocks, I'm just a bill, but it's a sign from the Westboro Baptist Church. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> So um, here's how this clearly happened. Some garbage person in the South Dakota State House was like, all right, fun thing for today. Everybody name stuff that gay people do. And they made a giant list and then just a, a thing that says, no, none of this circle cross through it. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. their law. The new rules would include the following. This is serious. First up, no marriage that's not one man and one woman, not surprisingly. And they also will not give benefits to anyone who doesn't fit into that biblical definition of marriage. Yeah, but part one, the Supreme Court doesn't count anymore. Yeah. <laughs> P.S. We just realized how many of us are divorced. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, sexual orientation is officially a legal basis for discrimination in South Dakota. So no making local laws that would take that off of our list of legal prejudice reasons, which, to be clear, is a list that we have. And are fighting to protect, yes. Yep. Uh, another rule, the state is not allowed to recognize a person's belief about anything trans-related. Including their own? Guys, I think I found a loophole <laughs> yeah, that's going to get us out of this. The whole thing. <laughs> Idiots. And then here's here's the last one for you. This was not an exhaustive list, by the way, but here's the last one I want to highlight. Yeah. Against all odds, this one might might even be more offensive than the rest of them. This is the rule to ban any gay stuff that, you know, they might have missed in their stupid fucking brainstorming thing. Exact words. The state may not condone or affirm homosexual, transgender, zoophilia, objectophilia, polygamy, or sexual orientation doctrines. Yeah. Right, yeah, no. What will these gays want to fuck next would literally be enshrined in their goddamn laws if Fucking this passed. Terrible. It really tells you something when people try to pass a law that they, like, wouldn't read aloud to your face because they'd know you'd punch them. Already punched me. Already punched, yeah. me. <laughs> already punched <laughs> me. Wow. You passed. And in putting the cock and ass back in caucus news tonight, <laughs> I know the media will tell you that somebody won the Iowa caucuses eventually. I left that blank, assuming by the time we recorded this shit on Wednesday afternoon, they'd have made a definitive call. But no, PDB. Uh, so ooh, ooh. Yeah, so I I'm going to go ahead and it. announce my own winner. <laughs> That's um, fair. It's not one of the candidates. Instead, the gold medal for the night goes to caucus precinct captain for not quite a mayor, Pete, Nikki Vanderheever, who is the protagonist in a viral video where every woman who ever unapologetically blocked your way at a Walmart aisle learned that Pete Buttigieg was gay after she caucused for him. <laughs> this is amazing. And she was not happy about it. <laughs> oh, just wait till she hears he's Christian. She's in for a real shock. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, so if you haven't seen the video, I encourage you to watch it because, A, it's fucking hilarious, and, B, the mainstream media isn't doing as good a job underscoring the source of the homophobia as they should. And to be clear, the unnamed bigot in the video doesn't mince words or anything. The word Bible comes up four times in two minutes, two more times if you count the times it was reduced to a pronoun. 
the the good guy was saying, but you know, regardless of who he loves, Pete is a human being. And the bad guy was saying, no, no, because the Bible. And that was the whole <laughs> goddamn thing. Uh, that and her hilariously demanding to know why nobody has mentioned this Pete being gay thing <laughs> up until now. Yeah. And can I just say, there could not be a better distillation of the Iowa caucus than this video. Right. You got three white people standing around while one of them coyly brags about her bigotry being dwarfed only by her ignorance. But everyone's unsure about whether or not she can call backsies because of it. Yep. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh, perfect microcosm right there. <laughs> and, and far be it from me to give this poor precinct captain any shit. She, she didn't drop kick the scut. And that's better than I would have done. But throughout the exchange. Vander Heever repeatedly says shit like, I totally respect your viewpoint on this, and I I'm not trying to tell you to think otherwise, and that's the fucking problem, right? The, 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 the problem is that a person can express a view this fucking toxic in public, and people's immediate reaction is to respect their viewpoint and not try to tell them to think otherwise. Still, the fucking the chick should get a gold medal or something. Yeah, absolutely. All right, and finally tonight... We have some news about Kobe Bryant, okay, Hillary Clinton, mm. and the answer to life, the universe, and everything. Thanks to Christian TV host Chris McDonald and his expert guest, Corey Daniel, we learned how all that stuff ties together during the latest episode of The Mac Files. <laughs> Formerly Filey McFile face. Yeah, yep. Exactly. <laughs> yep. So, turns out, Kobe Bryant was killed as part of a ritual sacrifice by a coven of Illuminati witches that's run by Hillary Clinton. Of course. And the only reason we found out about this is because Hillary was using the magical biblical power of the number 42, and she forgot to not include references to that number all over the evil plot. They always forget not to leave public-facing clues. They do. They do. It's, it gets them every cool. time. Cool that also, she is. and uh, this part I had to figure out on my own using my uh, rolling pane of glass that I use for conspiracy math that I roll around and do math on. Based on my calculations, the whole thing was funded by Pete Buttigieg in order to rig the Iowa caucuses against Bernie Sanders. But that is a whole other story. For now, all you need to know is that Hillary used evil 42 magic to murder Kobe Bryant. And, um... Now, now she waits, I guess. I I feel like that is not all I need to know. Also, Keith, be honest. You did not figure that out on your own. Twitter definitely helped that last <laughs> thing. Uh, Come on, buddy. They did. I will explain how Twitter was uh, vital in this investigation. So uh, you might be wondering, um, Keith, why are your ears bleeding? And that's a reasonable <laughs> question. <laughs> it is because I got sucked into this fucking rabbit hole and ended up watching a two-hour explanation of occult numerology by Corey Daniel. <laughs> he was the guest on the Mac Files. He also runs a very important website called The Phoenix Enigma. It is the only website devoted to, quote, decoding and reverse engineering the esoteric symbolism embedded within the city of Phoenix, Arizona, by examining Freemasonry, physics, sacred geometry, numerology, gematria, politics, architecture, and ancient religions. Of course, those are the sciences which form the foundations of the institutions of civilization. End real quote. I'm, I'm going to set the over under on number of fonts used on this website at seven. <laughs> I will take the over. <laughs> it's, it's actually just one, believe it or not. But oh, wow. It, when he talks, he talks in like 19 fonts. You'll, you'll see. Okay. All right. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. sure. yeah. He also works at a hotel. He's a concierge. <laughs> and um, using that knowledge for the, the stuff embedded within the city of Phoenix, he de occulted the death of, of Kobe Bryant. Clue number one a guy named at dot noso wrote a tweet in 2012 that said, quote, Kobe is going to end up dying in a helicopter crash, end quote. And before you ask, yes, this is a real tweet. And the reason that none of at dot no so's 52,000 followers or anyone else in the world responded to that tweet until last week is because 52,000 minus 10,000 divided by 1,000 equals 42. <gasps> 
And as we all know, Kobe was number 24 on the Lakers oh. 42 backwards. What? Uh, excuse me while I tweet some random predictions about celebrity deaths in hopes of one day making it onto the Mick Files. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You guys ready for clue number two? So sure. ready. Okay. Here it is. The number 42 is found 13 times in the Bible. No, it's not. And the final reference <laughs> is from the book of Revelation when we learn that the Antichrist is going to take over in the end times and rule for exactly 42 months. And 42 is six times seven, as we all know. Meanwhile, six plus seven, 13. That's all established. You guys are with me. But how does Hillary Clinton tie in? You're probably wondering. And that's the question we got from Chris McDonald because he is a good skeptic host. He jumped yeah. in here and said, <laughs> quote, okay, so we all know that it's pretty much a given that Hillary Clinton's a witch. Can a witch cast a spell on something like this to cause death? I personally mm. don't know anything about this stuff. You do, Corey. Do you think Hillary would be able to do it if she wanted to do it? End quote. And Corey responded, yes, but she wouldn't use her spells to make all this stuff happen. She'd make a bee fly into the helicopter and distract the pilot. And that would cause the crash and kill Kobe Bryant. So uh, that's why my ears are bleeding, everybody. There you go. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. All right. We know. I, I, I feel like you wouldn't need a witch magic thing for that. You would need a bee, right? Like you would just need a bee. That's true. Hey, apropos of nothing, do you guys know if Mitch McConnell ever rides around in a helicopter and where and exactly when? <laughs> <laughs> not no. related to anything we've been talking about. I just want to know because I have a bee. Do you have a bee guy? Just uh, <laughs> also? I do yeah. have a bee guy. No, we do have a bee guy. Yeah. <laughs> now, this might seem like a whole bunch of crazy nonsense from crazy people, but that's the end of my thought. That being said, <laughs> millions of seriously Otherwise, sane people or uh, you, you know what I'm saying? Millions of people were really convinced four years ago that Hillary Clinton is part of a pedophile murder syndicate that operates out of a fuck dungeon under a pizza place. <laughs> and that theory didn't even have any math to back it up. Yeah, uh, going to disagree with you on the otherwise sane bit, but OK. Yeah, <laughs> OK, <laughs> we're ready to but describe seriously, them. so many people, some some of those same people. To this day, believe that or believe ridiculous murder conspiracies about Hillary Clinton. So whenever your friends start talking about, you know, Bernie Sanders and Pete Buttigieg and Liz Warren and Joe Biden um, finding horcruxes inside of Native American fetuses that they're eating, make those people watch this video and make them explain how it's different than their theory, because it's fucking not. <laughs> and now that you have your marching orders, I suppose we can close the headlines for the night. Heat, Eli, thanks as always. Uh, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Abortion Ban. What? No. And when we come back, the Bible will get even judgier than usual. Hi, I'm No Illusions. I'm Heath Enright. And I'm Eli Bosnick. You know, here at The Scathing Atheist, we don't like to brag, but we perform a lot of invaluable services to the secular community. Like... Providing a mascot in the form of a pug -a -peg -a corn from Brooklyn. Or reading holy books and apologetics books so you don't have to. Which is why we wanted to take a moment to tell you, we're glad Rush Limbaugh has lung cancer. We're glad Rush Limbaugh has lung cancer. Yes, while the so-called adults are saying the mature thing about not wishing ill on anybody. And other, you know, nobody deserves some suchery in general. We don't have to do that. No, we don't. So please, listeners, feel very welcome to join us in thoroughly celebrating Rush Limbaugh's terminal cancer diagnosis. Because you deserve it. And more importantly, so does he. Feels good. Really good. And now, back to the show. Uh, excuse me, sir. Sir, can you, can you spare some change, please? Yeah, spare a little change. Change? Uh, Heath, Eli, what are you guys doing? Oh, hey, hey, Noah. Um, we're just trying to save up some money to mail our Patreon rewards. Can you believe that postage rates went up again? Again? Yeah. Well, why don't you guys just use stamps.com? Oh, what's stamps.com? 
Stamps.com brings all the services of the U.S. Postal Service right to your computer. Whether you're a small office sending invoices or an online retailer shipping out products or even a warehouse sending thousands of packages a day, Stamps.com can handle it all with ease. Okay, that sounds convenient, but how's it going to save us money? Well, I'm glad you asked, Eli. With Stamps.com, you save five cents off of every first-class stamp and up to 40% off shipping rates. That kind of savings really adds up, especially for small businesses. It does. Right now, our listeners get a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and the digital scale without any long-term commitment. Just go to Stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in scathing. That's Stamps.com. Enter scathing. All right. I'm sold. So let's go home, I guess, right? Eli, are you are you coming? Oh, no. I, I'm out here because I'm about to have a kid. Right. Oh. Right. Smart, mm-hmm. though. Keep at it. You guys have any change? No. When Eli first suggested we go back through the Bible skit style, I warned him that would take literally the rest of his life. And as we enter the sixth of the Bible's 66 books, 98 episodes later, he's starting to believe me, but it's too late to back out now. So we're excited to crack open the Book of Judges for this week's edition of Bible Beast Theater. So is there like a magic word or something like that? Dude, I don't know. Why didn't you just ask Joshua? Uh, because he might have murdered me. Okay, yeah, no, that's fair. Yeah. Uh, okay, um, <clears throat> um, Mr. God? <clears throat> God? You rang? Uh, yeah, we were wondering, now that Joshua's gone... Did you guys get who- that? It's Lurch. That was Lurch. No, we, we got it. Yep. Adam's yeah. family. Adam's so, family. Uh huh. Great show. Yeah. It is a great show. Eventually, sure. So, anyway, now that Joshua is gone, um, who do we use to fight the Canaanites? Oh, right. Yeah, J Dog. Um, Judah. Me? No, the other Judah. Okay. But, like, Simeon should, should come with me, right? Simeon, you'll come, right? Oh. Uh. I got a, got a lot of, um. What? What, what do you have? Sh- sheep. Sheep stuff. Sheep stuff? Really? That's the excuse? Uh, okay, fine, I'll come. Great. This worked out great. And the Lord delivered the Canaanites and the Perizzites into their hand, and they slew of them in Bezek ten thousand men. And they found Adana Bezek, king of the Canaanites in Bezek, and they pursued after him and caught him and cut off his thumbs and his great toes. Seriously, you guys are going to ruin my smash game. Your, your smash game? The Smash Brothers, Super Smash Brothers. Exactly. Now I'm going to have to yeah. main Fox McCloud because of this. Ah, oh, that is rough. I know, wow, right? yeah. Ugh, pain in the ass. Ugh. Uh, upside, uh, you have great toes. Thank you. No, guys, Welcome. guys, great toes means the big toe. We cut off his big toes. Oh. Uh, well, still. Again, again, thank you. Yes, you're welcome still. And from thence he went against the inhabitants of Debir, and in the name of Debir before was Kerjathsefer. And Caleb said, He that smiteth Kerjathsefer and taketh it, to him will I give Ashash my daughter to wife. And Othniel, the son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger daughter, took it, and he gave him Ashash the daughter to wife. And their children were Kormajamil, Swiggy Swiggy, and 10 to the 364th power in Japanese, but backwards. Eli, how many of these are real? All the ones before the kids. I hate this fucking book. Um, hello? Uh, God? Yeah, Judah, what's up? Um, who are you? I'm Sarah. I'm, uh, well, I'm kind of a... An executive assistant? Uh, whatever. It's, it, I'm in between titles right now. It's not important. Right. Well, um, we're, we're about to attack the, uh, Canaanites in the south. Just wanted to make sure we had God's support to kill them all and stuff like that. He's cool with that, right? Oh, uh, 
No can do, broski. I'm afraid the chariots of iron are no bueno. Uh, wait, um, you're saying God can't help us win because the Canaanites in the south have iron chariots? That is correct. Okay, well, yeah, that's disappointing. Well, good to know, I guess. Yeah, send F in the chat and all that, you know. Cool, cool. Um, don't really know how Eli does this two-voice thing with himself. It's weird. Yeah, well, maybe if you learn a second accent, am I right? Like two would be great. Ha, yeah, good one. Good one, Sarah. You're the smart and funny one. Thank you, Sarah. How can be Sanders? Thank you. Heath. Uh, okay, sorry. Sorry. And then, sure enough, bam! Ball gets me free two-day shipping. Wow, that does sound good. Right? Attention! Attention! Um, hey, can I have your attention, please? Hi, angel of God here. Got a message from God of the universe? Yeah, thank you. So... What's the deal with not destroying all the altars of the people you killed? That is not cool. What did we say? Um, we, we, we're sorry? Damn right you're sorry. Really leaving God with no choice but to sell you to your enemies. He's gonna do that. Uh, Wait, hold on. What? Okay, but don't worry. He, he, he's appointed, like, really, like, really good judges to get everyone on his side out of trouble. Really good judges? Yeah, so don't worry about the selling you to foreign powers thing as much. He's going to make it all okay with his fantastic judges. Oh, hell, there's no way this is in the book. It's just too spot on. All in the book, almost word for word, including what I'm saying right now. Uh, yeah, n next thing you're going to tell me that God doesn't want us to call witnesses. Oh, so, um, here's the thing about that. Therefore, the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, and he sold them into the hands of Chushan Shishareim, king of Mesopotamia. Eli, what did we say about the fake name thing? That one is real. Is it? Really? Yeah, man. Oh. This book is fucking stupid. Right? And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord strengthened Eglon, the king of Moab, against Israel. But when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, the Lord raised them up a deliverer, Ehud. Hello, I am Ehud. And Ehud made him a dagger which had two edges of a cubit length, and he did gird it under his raiment upon his right thigh. Wait, hold on a second. I have a foot and a half long dagger hidden right next to my balls. Yeah, you're going to need to walk super slow with that. All right, that's noted. Hi, uh, Eglin, uh, king of the Canaanites? Yes? Um, yeah. Ehud is here to see you. Who's that? Uh, it's, I don't know, it's, it's some guy with a present. Oh, I love presents, send him in. Mm -hmm. And he brought the present unto Eglon, king of Moab, and Eglon was a very fat man. Mean? Don't blame me, mean. it's in the book. Still. Hello, King Eglon. Um, I have a message for you from God. Oh, awesome. Cool. What is it? Uh, actually, could, um, could all your servants and guards, uh, leave? Oh, it's like a, like a secret message from God? Oh, yeah, precisely. Exactly. Okay, everyone, you heard him. Just move it out. Everyone out. Really? Uh, your highness... This guy literally just now. You just want to hear my secret message from God. Okay. Okay. Now, how about that secret God message? Uh, y you know what? Let's go into your inner chamber where there aren't so many, uh, witnesses. Oh, that sounds good. Sure thing. And stab you. Oh, no! A guy does not shit himself to death in the Bible. Uh, he does. That's he really there. he really does. Yep. Though. Yep. Uh, let me see that. Let me see that. And the dirt came out. Mm hmm. Wow. A guy gets stabbed so hard he shits himself in the Bible. Yep. Yep. Told you. Okay, so the Bible's not all bad. I, I guess not. Yeah, actually. That's fair. Yeah, yeah. Yep. That's okay. a good part. We don't talk about I it. I enjoy enough. that part.
Hey, uh, Ehud, right? Ah, yes, uh, Eglon Sharfant. Uh, what can I do for you? Yeah, uh, we heard a really loud, long, like, unhealthy shitting mm. noise in the mm. king's room. Just want to make sure everything is okay. Oh, uh, about that. Uh, he's just covering his feet. Okay, what does that mean? Uh, it means taking a shit. Because cause you shit on your feet? Is it because they well, shit on their feet? You know, it was more like, you know, when you went to places that people shit, you'd want to cover your feet because people just shit everywhere. Yeah. So, sorry, just to be clear, the authors of what a tremendous percentage of full-grown adults think is a good moral code chat all over the place so often they had turns of phrase turns about of phrase about that. Yes. Correct. Yep. Yes. Very much. Yep. That's it. Book is the best. It is. Oh, covering his feet, huh? Okay. Oh, I really covering his feet, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Uh, well, I'm just gonna go that way and... You're gonna uh, take off? Okay, cool. Cool, 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 cool. Man, he's been in there for a while. Yeah, yeah, he has, like a while. You, um, you wanna check? Yeah, we should check. I feel like we should check. Okay. Yeah. King Eglon? Yo, you okay in here? You okay, buddy? We're just wondering, um... Oh, gross. Someone stabbed him so hard he shit himself. Oh, yeah, that... That is accurate, what you said. I'm going to be sick. I bet it was that Ehud guy. How are you so calm? Oh, uh, I once used the bathroom after Eli Bosnick. Oh, that tracks. Okay. Yeah. Hey, great killing today, Ehud. Good stuff. Oh, why, th thank you. You the same. Yeah, uh, can I, can I tell you the weird part of today, though? We weird part? What's that? Yeah, yeah, the weird part, um... All the boners. Oh, all the boners. Yes. Thank right? you. Oh, I thought that was weird, too. Yeah. Hi, I'm Shamgar. I killed 600 men with an ox goad. Oh, hello. Um, what? what's an ox goad? It's like a, it's like a sharp stick that you use to herd cattle. Okay. So similar to a spear. It's similar to a spear, yes. Cool. Cool. That, that's super cool. Mm. Just want to make sure that getting it got into the book. No, it made it. All right, it's in. And lo, when Ehud died, the Israeli people once again did evil in the sight of the Lord, as they lacked object permanence, I guess, and so God delivered them into the hands of their enemies again. But soon there rose a new leader of the Jews to free them. Hi, you must be the newest leader of the Jews? That's me. Okay, now is it Deborah or Deborah? No idea. There's like 45 pages of people fighting about it on the internet. Go nuts. Sounds good. Can you send in Barack? I have some prophetess stuff for him. That sounds good, yes. Hello, Deborah. Uh, great to be here. Ooh, do we want to have Heath do the voice of Barack Obama? What? That was that was a pretty good impression. Yeah, he nailed it on the first try. He's he's really good at Thank that. Thank you. Yeah, no, he he is. But you know, white guy doing a black voice, kind of audio blackface. It's you know not what I audio mean? blackface. It's a celebrity impression. He happens to be a black person. Is it audio blackface when you do Ben Carson? I mean, yeah, but only because I also wear the makeup. And well, we've asked you to stop. Multiple times. No. Anyway, God wants you to take 10,000 men and go defeat Sisera. Okay, uh, not a problem. Uh, the road ahead may be long. The, the climb may be steep. But I believe that uh, together... We can defeat uh, Sisera. Hey, Barack. Uh, yes, Deborah. I miss you. I know you do. I miss you too, boo. Babe, Jail, have, have you seen my good tent pegs? Check the clay pots. They're all 
clay pots. They, they don't even make pots that aren't made of clay, babe. Did you check all of them? No. No. Okay, I found them. Were they in the clay pots? Yes. Why are we pitching our tent here anyways? I, I want to watch the Jews fight Sisera. You know, I, you know I'm related to Moses' father-in-law. Moses' father-in-law, yes. You told me a 10,000 times. Fine. And Sisera gathered together all his chariots, even 900 chariots of iron, and all the people that were with him, from Harosheth of the Gentiles upon the river of Kishon. But the Lord sowed confusion among Sisera and all his chariots and all his host, and they fell before Barak's blade. People of Mount Tabor, I, Sisera, your king, have brought you all to defeat these Jews once and for all. We are many in number, and our chariots are of iron. We shall not be defeated. Hooray! Oh, never defeated! Hooray! Okay, everyone, Iowa caucus, go. I'm stabbing myself in my eye! Murder, 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 murder! I can't see! <sighs> That was fucking crazy. Really need to switch to a ranked voting army s system. Yeah, I hear that. Oh, fuck. I didn't notice you were there. Who are you? I'm Jael, wife of Hebron. Uh, cool, 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 cool. Uh, I'm Cicero, um, king of the, uh... Oh, well, I was king, um... Can I hide in your tent? Um, sure. If anyone comes by and asks for me, don't tell them I'm here. Yep, that's, that's what hiding is. Okay, cool. Uh, can I have some milk in a blankie? Yes, you can have some milk in a blankie in the Bible. Awesome. Ah, uh, excuse me, miss? Uh, have you seen King Sisera? Have I? Take a look at this. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I drove a spike through his temple. How you like that? Well, uh, honestly, it's, uh, kind of gross. What? Oh, come on, man. It's the Bible. We literally just cut off a dude's thumbs and toes in this book. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. It comes off kind of, uh... Aggressive? Can I say aggressive? Oh, by me. Babe, why is there blood all over the tent? Because I nailed a guy to the floor in there, okay? Okay. Hi. Hi, I'm Hebron, a relative of Moses' father-in-law. Hello. I'm Brock. Oh, cool. I miss you. I know you do. I miss you too, boo. All right, well, if there's one thing you can always count on the Bible to provide, it's more words later. So we'll be back in a month with even more Bible Peace Theater. Before we hang this episode out to dry, I want to offer you guys Lucinda's apologies for missing a second week. She misses you, too, and uh, hopefully she'll be back next week. Anyway, that's all the blasphemy we've got for you tonight, but we'll be back in 10,022 minutes with more. If you can't wait that long, be able to look out for a brand new episode of our sister show's Hot Friend God Awful Movies, debuting at 7 a.m. Eastern on Tuesday, and an even newer episode of our half-sister show Citation Needed, debuting at noon Eastern on Wednesday. Obviously, this episode would feel empty and sad if I neglected to thank Heath Enright for being the jelly in the donut, Lucinda Lusions for being the Tootsie Roll Center in the Tootsie Pop, Eli Bosnick for being the hot in the pocket, Don Ford for being the voice in the fantasy and adventure and Marie Delafont from the Everyone's Autonomous Podcast for providing this week's Farnsworth quoteless Farnsworth quote. If you'd like to hear more from the perspective of an ex-fundy that dug her way out, you'll find a link to her podcast on the show notes. But most of all, of course, I want to thank this week's best people, Alistair Conrad, Rebecca Adesaric, Butter, Katie Tossable, Lesbian, Doubting Thomas, Melvin, Greg, and Grassy Knoll Man. Alistair Conrad and Rebecca who are so smart even random bystanders can see the floating equations when they think Adesaric, Butter, Katie, and Tossable lesbian who are so sexy Franklin Graham mistook him for the Super Bowl halftime show and doubting Thomas Melvin, Greg and Grassy No Man whose badassery is so high class their kick ass comes in bottles together these 11 people dairy products conspirators aerodynamic sexual orientations and stigmata fingerers preserved our podcast for another generation of house flies by giving us money not everybody has the wit and wisdom it takes to give us money but if you think you're up to the challenge you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash scathing atheist whereby you'll earn early access to an extended ad free version of every episode or you can make a one time donation 
donation by clicking on the donate button on the right side of the homepage at scathingatheist.com. And if you'd like to help, but your money is too hot for us to handle, you can also make a difference by giving us a five-star review, liking our Facebook page, and following at PIATPod on Twitter. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robinson handles our social media, and our audio engineer is Martin Clark, who also wrote all the music that was used in this episode, which was used with permission. If you have questions, comments, or death threats, you'll find all the contact info on the contact page at scathingatheist.com. Hello, Deborah. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, let me warm up, Brock. Hello, hello. Uh, 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 I got it. All right. <clears throat> the preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2020. All rights reserved.